Welcome everyone, warm greetings from Adyar to all sisters and brothers from all over the world and India that are joining us today for this joint meeting of the Madras Theosophical Federation and Pragya CS Studio. We give a warm welcome to Dr. N.C. Ramanujachari and brother S. Raman, who are the president and the secretary of the Madras Theosophical Federation. And today, 20 June, we continue the celebration of the seventh International Day of Yoga, which we began yesterday with a very inspiring talk by Sister Linda Oliveira from Australia. And for those who miss it or want to watch it again, please access Pragya CS Studio YouTube channel, where you also will find not only Sister Linda's talk, but today's lecture after it ends and many other videos with theosophical content. And today on this special occasion of the seventh International Day of Yoga, we are very glad to have Sister Swati ready from the Theosophical Society in Bangalore. But before starting our gathering, we want to make an announcement. Sri Vira Raghavan, a long-term resident of Adyar, passed to peace last week. Mrs. Viaya Vira Raghavan, his wife, has been serving in the Theosophical Society Administration Wing she is the current treasurer of the Adyar Lodge and also committee member of the Theosophical Order of Surgeons. She is a resident of Adyar almost from her birth. So today, let's pray for the rest of his soul and also for his family. For that, we will observe one minute of silence in honor of his departed soul. Now, a few requests in the uh, technological aspect to everyone is to please keep your microphone muted during the talk. And at the end of the talk, we are going to handle a 15 minute session of questions, answers, comments, queries, etc. So, if you want to take part in that session, kindly note your questions, whether on the chat or raise your hand at the moment of the final discussion. Uh, we thank all of us for your presence and for your cooperation. And now we are going to open our meeting with the universal invocation, indicating the unity in diversity and oneness of life, followed by a few moments of silence. So I request all of you to feel comfortable and say this beautiful and inspiring prayer. O oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom. O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. O oh, hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee. No, there are therefore one with every other. And to continue our program, it is my pleasure to introduce our today's speaker, Svati Reddy from Theosophical Society Bangalore. She's a high qualified yoga teacher 
and today on the occasion of this International Day of Yoga. She will share with us her knowledge and experience with a talk entitled Yoga, a Holistic Approach to Daily Life. Sister Svati holds a degree in science, two master degrees in science and philosophy of textiles, and is currently pursuing a PhD degree on integrated course in yoga. As a professional, she has worked in the NGO field and as a college, and as a college teacher, as well as in the field of yoga. She's a certified yoga trainer from the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta Ashram and has been trained as yoga teacher for people with special needs, prenatal yoga, yoga for mental health program and prison yoga training. She has worked as a lecturer in Yonki Nivas College and the subject being yoga and health. And in collaboration with Samishka NGO and Prakul Orya NGO Bengaluru as yoga trainer therapist for three years or special needs schools, remand home, short-term and long-term homes and cancer affected children at Kidwai Cancer Institute, Bangalore. She is a third member generation of Theosophical Society. And from her childhood, she has been attending various Theosophical activities, including study camps, talks, and mystic stuff. She has also conducted yoga session in the Jyot camp organized by Indian section at Bhuvali. And she has given talks on theosophical subjects in different lodges. Before handing over to Swati, we want to congratulate her as tomorrow is a very special day in her yoga journey on which she will start a center for learning and self-development known as Vayam Vikas, which means self-development. Through this center, she aims for the holistic development of individuals by conducting various activities under instructions of specialist yoga trainers, as meditations, yoga, chanting, art activity, buried mats, Sanskrit, music, dance, courses on Upanishads, etc. After the inauguration of the center tomorrow, 21st June, there will be a yoga nidra session by Swami Yogaratna Sasvati at 6.30 p.m. So in case you are interested to attend, we will send a registration link in the chat later during the talk, as well as a Swati email ID. So best wishes, dear Swati, in this new venture. And now the space is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katrina, Katrina, for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you so much for all your best wishes. Without any further delay, I, would, uh, I will share the screen for the talk for the day. I hope the video is, the screen is visible to all of you. All right, so today's topic, a holistic approach to daily life. We'll start off the topic with uh, the shloka uh, in appreciation with all the gurus, especially Patanjali Guru who gave us the knowledge of yoga. Yogena chittasya padena vacha malam sharirasya chavaitya kena yopakarotam pravaram muninam patanjali pranjali pranjali rana tosmi. Who gave yoga for serenity a sanctity of, and sanctity of mind, grammar for clarity and purity of speech, and medicine for perfection of death, of health. Uh, let us bow our, uh, not bow ourselves to the noble sage Patanjali and also all the gurus that are that have contributed to the field of yoga. 
So coming to what I will be covering today, we will talk about what yoga is, the definition of yoga, which already uh, Sister Linda covered it very beautifully yesterday and a little bit more today. And then there are five points of yoga which are given by uh, Swami Vishnu Devananda, which can be applied on a daily basis uh, by everyone. So we will see how to how, what these five points of yoga are. And then uh, coming to yamas and yamas, as mentioned in Patanjali Yoga Sutras, I would just like to stress a little more about yama, niyama, asana, and pranayama alone. Uh, I will also tell you the reason why more on that. Then coming to the koshas based on Taitriya Upanishad and how we can uh, connect the Ashtanga Yoga with the koshas and how uh, at different levels, uh, different type of practices can be applied. So we will check that, uh, we will look into that today. And also the Shad Kriyas, which are the cleansing techniques, which are mentioned in Bhiranda Samhita and also Hatha Yoga Pradipika and few other yogic texts. Uh, especially, uh, specifically, I mentioned Kiranda Samhita because it's a little more detailed in this yogic text. And about last concept is about uh, the diseases that we get, uh, how we get and why we get is all mentioned in Yoga Vasishta. So we will look into it and we will also see how yoga can help us get rid of all these ailments. So coming to the definition. Uh, yesterday we saw Samatvan Yoga Uchate, which is equanimity is yoga, we already saw. Uh, yoga Karmosu Kaushalam, which is yoga is skill action. Bhagavad Gita says, gives these two definitions. Patanjali Yoga Sutra, as we already saw yesterday, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirogaha. Sanskrit version also we saw yesterday, Katopanishad says, it's a state of mastery over senses and mind. And Yoga Vasishta says it's a skillful and subtle process to claim calm down the mind. So these are the different definitions given in various texts. I would not like to stress more on this because we have already discussed yesterday uh, on this. Uh, Sister Linda has uh, beautifully explained uh, these concepts. Then coming to the five points of yoga. So here we can see the five points are proper exercise, proper breathing, proper relaxation, proper diet, positive thinking and meditation. So uh, all of us do it. I mean, uh, to a certain extent, all of us do exercise, all of us breathe, all of us relax, all of us eat good food. Uh, we do think positive and we meditate to a certain extent. But what is this proper exercise, proper breathing and all that we will look into it today. So proper exercise, what according to uh, Swami Vishnu Devananda is uh, synchronizing your movements, body movements with your breath, providing enough oxygen to the body so that you don't exhaust the body while you're doing your exercises. So if you see in the practice of yoga, uh, we all the movements are very slow, they're steady and always the movements are synced with the breath. So the inhalation exhalation pattern is always followed throughout the yoga practice when we practice various asanas or even breathing techniques. So any form of exercise you do, you should not exhaust yourself. So any exercise that will, uh, that will make you feel tired is not the right kind of exercise, meaning it should not drain your energy to a uh, to a level that you are you 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 will want to sleep after that. So always uh, yoga asana is always followed by relaxation, which is shavasana. Shavasana has many benefits, which I will talk a little later in relaxation. So any exercise, uh, if it is synchronized uh, well along with breath with uh, by giving a little amount of rest in between the exercises but doing the same amount of exercise will give you will will have a good impact on your body so that is proper exercise so the next one is proper breathing so most of us what uh, what we do is on a regular basis on a daily uh, any time of the day if you just notice your breath we are only breathing shallow. We do not make use of the entire uh, space in the lungs. So we do not make use of the upper lobes, middle lobes, and the lower lobes of the lungs. 
we only breathe in through a certain space that we breathe in regularly, we continue to breathe in that. So proper breathing is making use of the lungs to its best capacity and uh, using the lungs properly to inhale and exhale is what is proper breathing. And then proper relaxation, like I mentioned, after every exercise or after yogasana practice, there is always relaxation or shavasana, which actually activates both. So when you do your asanas and all your exercises, we activate the sympathetic nervous system. By relaxing, we, especially when it comes to shavasana, we are also activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is very good. And it also improves the quality of sleep and it has many more benefits, which I will talk a little later when we come to asanas. Then coming to proper diet, there are a lot of things that we can talk about diet. Uh, all of us know we have to eat healthy, we have to eat fresh fruits and uh, many things like that. All of us know that. Uh, so I will not touch on those aspects. Uh, all of us know that we have to eat uh, complete, all nutrients should be provided to the body in sufficient quantity. All of us know that so, so that there is no deficiency in the body. So this is all very clear to us. How much to eat and how many times to eat in a day and then what kind of food leads to what kind of uh, 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 nature within us. All that is mentioned very beautifully in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Gita is considered as one of the yogic texts um, one of the major yogic texts. So if you uh, look into the chapters of Bhagavad Gita, there is Sattvic, Rajasik and Tamasik uh, Guna and all of us in everything that exists. So the kind of food that we eat also has a lot of impact on what kind of character we are going to develop. So anything that is too spicy, uh, too sweet, anything that is uh, too much, uh, too bitter, all that leads to rajasic character and anything that is fresh uh, like fresh fruits and vegetables and anything that is uh, not cooked for too long and all that is good for sattvic and tamasic is anything that is fermented and kept overnight and things like that, something that, is, that does not have too much taste and all that comes under tamasic food. So there is a lot more that we can talk about it. Uh, the proportion of food that you have to eat is very individualistic. So um, each of us have a particular size of palm. So whatever, when you join both your hands, whatever fits into your both the palms, that should be the size of your meal per, of your meal per meal. Per meal, you're supposed to eat that much quantity. So when you eat that much, the juices that are produced in the stomach has enough. Uh, so the food that is, goes into the stomach will have enough uh, digestive juices to digest the food that has been consumed. If not otherwise, if you eat too much, it, it may not digest completely one, one thing. Two, uh, the body would have conserved uh, energy for different activities throughout the day. So if you notice, if you eat too much, uh, the, if you have a class or if you have any work to do after your lunch time, you will fall, fall asleep. So it's very important to eat whatever fits into your fist. So even if you go for a wedding or any party or anything like that, you have to choose what to eat and eat only how much is required for your body for that particular meal. So eating like that will uh, conserve the energy that is reserved for other uh, activities like mental activity and for breathing and for any activity that you you will be doing or the body does. Will It will conserve that energy for those activities and you can continue to do your work uh, as usual. Only when you eat excess food, you fall asleep after lunch or after your meal. So that's a little about uh, proper eating. A proper diet but there is a lot more that we can talk since there are many other topics to cover i will move on to positive thinking and meditation so positive thinking and meditation all of us know we have to think positive uh, all of us know meditation is very good for health so the thing is um, most of us think whatever we think inside our mind does not move out so positive thinking or negative thinking, what, whatever we do, we can, uh, and we can't draw a line and say this is positive and this is negative. 
So there is no 100% positive and 100% negative about anything. For example, uh, listening to um, songs is nice. It's not, nothing negative about it, but playing loudly, disturbing everyone else around is not nice. So that is something negative, but still listening to music is still good. But how much volume is too much is something that's left to us to decide. So positive thinking, the picture that is drawn here on the sides, most of us think what we think is going to be within us. So what happens is uh, we always think what we think is within us. And unless we uh, let it out through our senses, through our, because I speak, mouth speaks. So unless we let it out through our five senses, we think it does not actions speak. So we think it does not go out. Uh, that is the reason these five uh, corners of this drawing that I've drawn here. So these five senses are just there, but it has no impact on these thoughts because thoughts are so, so powerful. They travel faster than the light. So you can see here, these five senses have nothing to do. The thought that is there within the mind, it actually vibrates and goes out the moment we create it in our mind. So whatever we think we become. So the seed is in the mind. So whatever we think every single moment, every single second that we think we act, we uh, brood over the thought that is there, that is coming to us, we must be very aware of what is happening. Sometimes we end up sitting with a group of people talking about someone without even realizing that talking like this may not may completely hamper the relationship with us and that person it may take quite a, quite some time to um, you know get back to that person normally if you if, if just by indulging uh, for a long time uh, with with a group like that can cause a lot of issues so this awareness is very important so positive thing all of us know we have to think positive and all that but being aware of what is positive and how, uh, what impact it is going to have, being aware is the first step. And then taking a decision to stay in that company or move on and everything else is secondary. And meditation, of course, all of us uh, uh, cannot reach that meditative state. All of us have different kinds of uh, mindsets and uh, do, throughout the day we are into a lot of things. So meditation, uh, um, like uh, Sister Linda spoke yesterday, uh, dhyana comes when there's good dharana, dharana comes when there is good pratyahara, pratyahara comes when there is uh, pranayam, asana, and yama niyama is followed. So likewise, meditation should be, ideally it should be done. If it is done, it's very good. So these are the basic things which all of us actually follow, uh, but it's but it's even better if it is followed effectively, like Swami Shivananda says, be aware of what you're doing when you do your exercises, being aware of the breath and breathing in deeply and exhaling completely to once again, take in the breath deeply. So being aware of the breath itself can change a lot of things within our body and mind also. And relaxation is very important, diet and etc. So coming to what makes yoga so different from other exercises. So all of us know yoga is good for muscles. It stretches the muscles uh, and all that. It gives a lot of strength, everything. So how is it good for bones? So every three years once, every single bone, every single cell in the bone is replaced by a new cell. So continuously, if we sit with a hunched back over a period of time, we, we get a hunchback because every three years the bone is getting into a new shape uh, because it's changing its entire structure. So it, it exercises the ligaments, it exercises the internal organs. There are so many asanas that uh, massages the internal organs in turn, activating some glands and massaging and helping the bowel movement within the body and all that. So there are so many therapies that are given for uh, mentally ill or mentally challenged people to improve their uh, skills. Um, it, it could be just eye-hand coordination and things like that. So there are many things that are give, uh, uh, that have come up with respect to yoga. Um, so yes, 
So at a very deep level, yoga has an impact, not only uh, the muscles and bones, the internal organs, the glands, all of them get activated by doing yoga. And there are no rigorous movements like the other exercises. And it, with yoga, we provide sufficient oxygen to the body. Therefore, we do not pant for breath when, you, when we do asanas. Um, so there is enough uh, relaxation given and all that. Then, like I mentioned already, it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system, both, which no other form of exercise can provide. So sympathetic nervous system is responsible for all our voluntary action. Parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for all our involuntary action. That is, inter that is digestion, uh, for example, you know, uh, cleaning away the dead cells from the body and all that. So all that is responsible by, for, by the parasympathetic nervous system. So coming to the eight limbs of yoga, which was already discussed very well yesterday, I would just like to touch upon yama, niyama, asana and pranayama. The rest of it, uh, I will just uh, finish in few sentences. So yama and niyama is considered one of the most important things to be followed according to uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras because um, any of these, any if you open any holy book, all these are definitely mentioned there. So all of these, no holy book says go and harm people, no holy book says uh, don't speak the truth. So all of this is mentioned in most of the ho uh, holy books, so religious books. So if you look into all this, these are basic things that a person needs to follow in life basic ethics that we need to follow in our lives. So if this is not, for example, um, Satya. So if you're not truthful, not true to yourself or to anyone else, for example, I'm just randomly picking up one of the Yamas. So if you, if you tell a lie to someone, constantly to cover that lie, you have to tell another lie. So constantly your mind is thinking about how to cover up that lie. And with all this, if you begin to do asanas, your mind is still thinking about that and it is not at peace. It cannot be at peace. Therefore, if these things are followed, automatically the body is ready for yoga. It's ready for any form of uh, spiritual practice. So these things are a must. So each of these examples, if you see also, so uh, yamas are things that you have to uh, observe make sure you follow ahimsa make sure you speak the truth make sure you don't steal and all that and niyamas are things that you have saucha for example saucha is not that just the physical uh, cleanliness that we have to follow it's also the mental mentally we have to be just now we saw positive thinking so mentally also we have to be very clean and also emotionally so any negative uh, emotion, sadness or misery or anger that we get, we should quickly uh, become aware of that emotion and do whatever possible to get over that emotion quickly. Being aware is one of the most important thing in any step uh, uh, in the field of yoga. Then Santosha, try to be uh, content and happy with whatever you have. Tapas, uh, have that uh, uh, you know determination to do whatever you want to do. And then Swadhyaya, self-study, knowledge of self. Uh, accumulating the knowledge of self should be continuous all the time. And surrender to God. Surrender to God. Uh, some of you all may not believe in God. That's perfectly all right. At least there is something very powerful beyond our um, understanding. So surrender to that energy. So coming to asanas, the next one. So in Patanjali Yoga Sutras, the definition of asana is given as Thiram Sukham Asana, which means asana is the steady and comfortable. Only when you are, when you get to an asana, it could be even simply sitting cross-legged. So if you are steady in that position, and if you are able to uh, be very comfortably sitting in that position, and um, in that posture, only then it is called as asana. If you are, if you have come to a position and you're still struggling and there is some kind of muscle that you're holding tight, uh, that means you're still trying to get to the asana. You're not in asana yet. The second thing that uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras talk about asana is 
asana is achieved upon uh, loosening the tension like i mentioned already so you have to be able to sit comfortably in whichever asana you are doing so you get to the asana sit comfortably in that position and you should be able to uh, reach a meditative state only then it is called as or only then it is said that you have achieved the asana and asanas have many many benefits uh, physically and also uh, at a very deep level so different asanas have different uh, benefits so pranayama comes after this pranayama is the prana is the vital energy and regulation of this flow of energy within the body is called pranayama like already discussed yesterday so we have uh, many types of pranas in our body so one uh, is the five major vayus that is we have this even in our jyoti puja so we have prana apana samana udana and gyana vayu which is located in different parts of the body prana vayu is located uh, in the chest and apana apana vayu in the pelvis samana vayu navel udana vayu in the throat and gyana vayu in the whole body so prana vayu is responsible for swallowing food and um, to breathe in to breathe in and to swallow anything that is responsible for going in is prana vayu and it the direction is upward so even if you have to burp or if even if you want to vomit if prana vayu is not flowing in the di uh, right direction it, it, these actions will become difficult to do then you have the apana vayu which flows downwards this prana is responsible for your digestion your excretion uh, um, regular uh, menstrual cycle anything related to legs and below the navel anything any activity below the navel apana vayu is responsible this for example you must have noticed if you have any issues uh, related to uh, piles or maybe if you have any re uh, issues related to menstruation cycle if you go to ayurveda center they also work on the same basis so they might give you enema that's because that will pull the uh, apana vayu downwards you will have imbalance in your health only when these vayus are not flowing in their uh, particular direction so yoga therapy or ayurveda therapy usually work on the root cause of the problem to solve the problem so when they give you enema it simply means that the apana vayu has not been functioning well so you will notice that uh, they 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 are trying the root cause of the problem so samana vayu it's uh, basically responsible for uh, digestion so it moves in the circular direction in the navel region then you have the udana vayu which moves upwards uh, so it is responsible for speech and physical growth and it is located in the throat then you have the vyana vayu which is there throughout the body and it is responsible for all uh, for the circulation of blood and your skin so some of us who have skin diseases uh, it could be it could be there could be many reasons but one of the reasons could be um, the improper flow of yana vayu sometimes if you notice if you just begin pranayam regular pranayam correct way of doing pranayam you will notice that slowly skin diseases start reducing of course the eating pattern and the internal body cleansing and everything also should be taken care because if the blood is impure blood because blood also flows all over the body yana vayu also flows all over the body and they, these two are interconnected so if the blood is impure also uh, skin diseases can happen so these are the major uh, five pranas and there are upa pranas that are that i have mentioned here so upa pranas are naga which is responsible for burping and kurma which is responsible for blinking of the eyes devadatta which is responsible for yawning and krit uh, krikala which is responsible for sneezing sneezing is also a very important action and with this action should not be resisted so uh, krikala is responsible for sneezing action then there is uh, dhananjaya which is which remains in the body even after death um for decomposition so here if you see um 
these values all of, in any possible religion in any uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, practice after that you would have seen there is some kind of uh, a ritual that is done after 11 days or 14 days or 15 days so in each uh, custom this varies but there is a scientific reason there is a yogic reason for it so uh, medically a person is declared dead dead only when the white the organs of the person stops functioning and the, the person is not breathing anymore and the heart stops beating so medically that person is declared dead when all this happens but in yogic terms only when all these pranas leave the person can be considered as dead so till then these especially some of these vayus can stay back in the body especially if the person is young uh, the some of the values still stay back uh, after death and it takes quite some time for it to move out of the body. So till then there are values and that is the reason some of these uh, agoris uh, in the north, they tend to sit on the dead bodies which are fresh to absorb these energies. They have a technique and they have certain benefits when they do it. Therefore they do it. So these pranas, do ex some of them do exist after death and some of them exit at different stages after death. So these pranas have a lot of impact on our body and a lot of impact on our physical health also. Then coming to what, uh, how you can connect your, uh, how the breath is connected to mind, breath and a lot more. So first thing is uh, all of us know uh, that if we breathe slowly, we, we tend to live long. So you can see the animals that breathe slowly, they live longer. The animals that breathe faster, their lifespan is a lot more shorter. So breathing slowly is very important. So this is the small exercise which I make uh, some of my yoga participants do. So number of breaths per minute. So you can have a stopwatch with you and you can see the number of breaths per minute. That is normal inhalation, exhalation without deep breathing. So you can see the number of breaths you have per minute and then uh, come to conclusion. So what it means is 18 breaths per minute is considered as idle medically, idle medically. But then according to yogic texts, uh, the lesser number of breaths you have per minute, the calmer your mind is. So it is good to have lesser minutes of breath per minute. So some of you may have uh, 20 or 40 or 50 it, it varies but if with the practice of pranayam you will notice that one month of consistent practice of pranayam will have definitely have a lot of impact on number of breaths per minute so this you can do this experiment uh, later on so one and the other thing is brahmari breathing uh, to improve lung capacity so you can check for yourself inhale deeply and as you exhale, chant Makara like this. So you can keep chanting Makara till you exhale completely. So observe the number of seconds uh, you're exhaling. So even that you have to watch it on a stopwatch. So each time you exhale and make this sound, make sure you exhale for longer time. This also is a simple technique to see if you're improving your lung capacity. Very small, simple techniques to improve the lung capacity. Then, how does pranayam help? So once you're physically fit, so all these why I was stressing about is, so before we get into pratyahar, dharana, dhyana and samadhi, if the body is not fit, it, it is not ready for any kind of uh, spiritual progress or any kind of spiritual uh, uh, upliftment within you. So what happens is uh, when the Kundalini energy or whatever you want to call it, when these energies start moving uh, within your body, the body needs a lot of energy. Uh, body needs a lot of stamina. The mind needs to be very stable, very balanced. Therefore, yama and yama. So uh, the mind needs to be very balanced, the mind needs to be very strong and the body needs to be fit to accept these uh, changes within the body or within the pranic, at the pranic level. 
So when the physical body is ready, so if you see in yoga asanas, you can you will notice that there is a lot of arm balancing asanas. There's a lot of asanas which engage your core muscles to make your core muscles tight and fit. So the entire body should be nice and strong to go ahead in the path of uh, yoga or in the spiritual path. So it's very important to keep the body fit and healthy. So if the body is not healthy, it becomes a little difficult to face things. So also uh, in uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras, it is mentioned that uh, it is responsible for thinning the veil of karma. So it reduces the, uh, it is mentioned that it reduces the uh, veil of karma within us. So pranayama helps in that also. And pranayama prepares your body and your mind for dharana. So pranayama, uh, some of my participants in yoga classes have uh, observed and noticed, or even you must have noticed, if you after you do a pranayama or uh, it could be any asana or even after shavasana, the mind is completely still. It becomes a little difficult to uh, talk sometimes after that complete stillness. So that uh, the silencing of mind happens uh, after pranayama. Certain types of pranayams are very effective in doing this uh, to the mind. So the body and mind becomes completely calm and relaxed and the body is ready for dharana. So I keep telling some of my students, uh, if they practice pranayama before they begin to study, it, it calms the mind's mind down completely and allows you to focus to prepare for your exams or prepare for your studies well. So pranayama is very good to improve dharana and in turn dhyana and samadhi. That's the reason I said fo I, I wanted to focus a little bit on uh, pranayama, asana and yama niyama, which stabilizes the body and the mind and the breath. It keeps these three very uh, intact and strong and balanced. Once these are balanced, everything else that happens. So if this much has happened, the next that is Pratyahara, because you have already seen the silence, you have already experienced that uh, uh, that complete content contentment or that silence or the peace within you, automatically Pratyahara happens. Because uh, once you have seen that peace and happiness within you, automatically you start withdrawing your uh, senses from materialistic life. So that happens very naturally once you observe all this within yourself. So that should be deep observation within yourself, deep practice. So the, if, if one focuses on yama, niyama, asana and pranayama sincerely on a daily basis, pratyahara happens. And once pratyahara happens, dharana becomes easier because your uh, attraction towards worldly things becomes a lot lesser than it was earlier. And then that, that is when dharana becomes easy. And once dharana becomes easy, your dhyana and everything else follows automatically. Then coming to the koshas, I was uh, trying to, I don't know what these lines are. Okay. So coming to the koshas, which is mentioned in Taitiriya Upanishad, the Pancha Koshas, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, and Vignanamaya Kosh. I have no idea how these lines are coming. Anyway, so for the Annamaya Kosh. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, maybe somebody is doing by mistake. We'll correct it, Swatiji. Okay. Please continue. Okay, so Annamaya Kosha. So it, for the Annamaya Kosha to be strong, that is for the physical body to be strong, we need to do proper exercise or asanas and diet proper eating is very important like mentioned in Bhagavad Gita then coming to the pranaya, pranamaya kosha so for this proper pranayam especially nadi should be pranayam is highly recommended because it purifies the nadis as mentioned in the yogic text so purifying the nadis allows the free movement of uh, and uh, prana within the body, within the pranamaya kosha. Then you have yamas and yamas and selfless service, which is uh, which helps in the development or which helps in uh, betterment of manomaya kosha. So yamas and niyamas are that important to follow. And then we have uh, vignanamaya kosha, for which we need to know be consistent in the uh, in acquiring the knowledge of self 
right inquiry and meditation. So not it's not necessary to believe everything that everyone says. So you can do your uh, uh, checks and then you can practice whatever you feel is right. So then Samadhi is responsible, is good for an Anandamaya Kosha. So this is how we can link the different layers or uh, different yamas, uh, different limbs of uh, yoga to the different koshas of the body. Then Giranda Samhita, which is uh, uh, written by uh, Sage Giranda, it's also called Katastha Yoga. It has seven limbs, unlike Patanjali Yoga Sutras, which has eight limbs. So here there are no yamas and yamas, there are shad karmas. So shad karmas are the purification techniques of the body, which generally most of them do not focus. Uh, this is not external body, this is internal body cleansing, uh, which, it, which is one, of, it is actually the first chapter of Giranda Samhita. So shad karmas are given a lot of importance in Giranda Samhita. It's mentioned also in Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So uh, cleansing techniques, uh, according to uh, Sage Giranda, it, 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 the purification of the body and mind happens when we do shat karmas. So there is uh, uh, the, the cleansing of the internal body also helps in uh, purifying your mind is what uh, Sage Giranda believes. So yamas and niyamas are not mentioned in Giranda Samhita. So you have asanas, mudras, pratyahara, pranayama, dharana, and samadhi, just like dhyana and samadhi, just like uh, uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So this is a little bit of change in uh, Giranda Samhita. So coming to what these uh, shat karmas are. So if you see the shat karmas, you have niti, dauti, pasti, nauli, kapalabhati, and trataka. So you have these uh, six uh, practices that are followed to keep your uh, body clean, body and mind clean, which could lead to a, a very good progress in your spiritual feet, in your spiritual development. So here you can see neti. We will see each of these uh, in detail. So neti is basically nasal cavity cleansing. Dauti is your digestive tract cleansing. Basti is your uh, rectum and anus cleaning. Nauli is the movement of your um, abdominal muscles to uh, move the bo uh, bowels away from the small and large intestine. So it, you must have seen Ramdev Baba churning his abdomen right to left, up and down and within. So that is nothing but Nauli and uh, a lot of things come under that. Then we all of us must have done Kapalbhati at some time in our life. So Kapalbhati is actually a Kriya or shat, it comes under Shat Karma. But in Hatha Yoga, Hatha Yoga Pradivika, in one way when we do Kapalbhati, it is considered as uh, Pranayama. But otherwise it is, but no one really does it that way. So generally Kapalbhati is not a Pranayama, it is a Shat Kriya, it is a Kriya. Then Trataka, it's an eye exercise which purifies the eyes. Uh, most of us do not consider uh, that eyes also should be cleaned at a regular basis. So Trataka is cleansing of the eyes. So let's look at this in detail and we'll see how these Shat Kriyas really help us uh, physically and mentally. So Gatastha Yoga or Giranda Samhita uh, has Dauti, Basti, Neti, Nauli, Trataka, and Kapalabhati. It mentions that it has to be done in this particular order. So in Giranda Samhita, Sage Giranda clearly mentions that it helps in purifying the different bodies of the different vessels that we live in, uh, the, all the koshas. He clearly mentions that it purifies the body and mind at a very deep level uh, by following just by prop practicing Shat Kriyas or Shat Karmas. And in Hatha Yoga Pradipika, you can see here uh, uh, the six uh, uh, kinds of duties, uh, Dautis that we have to do are uh, Dauti, Basti, Neti, Trataka, Nauli and Kapalabhati. So the order in which we have to do is different in Hatha Yoga Pradipika and Gerita Samhita. Just the order, but the uh, cleansing techniques are all same. 
only in giranda samhita the cleansing techniques are a little more detail in in its explanation but otherwise uh, hatayura pradipika and giranda samhita both of them have same uh, method of cleansing and the benefits are also same so coming to dauti dauti is uh, internal cleansing that is you're cleaning your elementary canal so vat uh, vat sara dauti is swallowing air so you you swallow air through the mouth you suck the air through the mouth and swallow air through the mouth for this the stomach must be empty for all kinds of dauti the stomach must be empty that is previous day night by 6 o'clock you should have had all kriyas for that matter the stomach must be empty so you must have had food the previous day 6 pm and after that no food no intake of food the food should uh, the 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 digestive system must be clear and morning you should have cleared your bowel and only then this practice should happen so swallowing the air until the stomach you will feel light and full in the stomach so swallowing the air if your element if your digestive tract is completely clear after you follow a swallow air after some time you will see that the air actually comes out of you comes out through the anus if your digestive system is completely clean same thing with vari sara which is water so it uh, there with this there is a little bit of uh, um exercise that is involved so a lot of stretching twisting and all that is involved in uh, vari sara same thing with agni uh, so uh, with vari sara you drink water and uh, till the throat completely fill the stomach completely with water and then do these stretching exercises do the twisting and all that and then it will help in uh, easy elimination of whatever bowel that is sitting in the corners of the villi then coming to agni sara this is uh, flapping of the abdomen in and out rapidly about uh, rapidly very fast uh, uh, to a very great uh, speed and then moving the abdomen right to left up and down so this will increase the fire in the abdomen so when I, when i was talking about proper diet all uh, the pizza and coke is considered as a very good combination in fact it's one of the worst combinations because pizza is has definitely has a little bit of fat and coke has is cold it can't be had hot so cold water and uh, fat together uh, it makes it very difficult for the digestive system to digest food so for example if you see if you put ghee into a, a hot glass of water it it uh, readily dissolves uh, it breaks down easily but if you put it in cold water it it solidifies it becomes a little difficult to digest so uh, it's not advisable to have cold water when you uh, when you are eating food so uh, it's always good to keep your abdomen hot uh, so agni sara increases the fire in the belly then uh, coming to uh, then agni sara also uh, massages the internal the organs of the body that is your intestine intestines small and large intestines so whatever is sitting in different corners of the uh, intestine it is easily pushed out so now uh, there is a practice where people swallow uh, even uh, castor oil uh, to remove but all this should be done only and uh, under the guidance of a doctor not otherwise then danta mola dauti cleaning of the tongue all of us do it so brushing teeth cleaning the danta mola dauti is specifically mentioned uh, so corners of the teeth cleaning the corners of the teeth is very important on a regular basis jihwa mola dauti that is cleaning of the tongue jihwa mola that is corner of the tongue complete back of the tongue cleaning of the tongue is considered one of the basic practices that has to be followed on a daily basis then karna randra dauti ear cleaning so for this uh, what is mentioned in the book is the four finger and the ring finger the middle finger should be bent the four finger and the ring finger should be placed in this position so the four finger goes behind and the ear must be uh, you must shake the ear like this and then what happens is uh, the wax in the ear actually comes out but i have tried this this doesn't happen if you have not uh, oil the ear properly so this doesn't happen with prior uh, preparation so what is the prior preparation 
you have to put uh, one drop of very clean uh, oil it could be coconut oil or sesame oil into the nose and into the ears um, and then and it has to be uh, followed periodically so once that is done and you place your ears uh, hands in this position and then just do this the wax comes out of the ear you don't have to put anything into the ear to take out the wax it comes out very easily and uh, earlier I, I have tried this when i was uh, studying all this i tried and i was like this is practically not possible uh, but yes when you apply this oil which is recommended even in ayurveda application of oil in the nose and uh, ear to trap the bacteria and virus within the nostrils uh, there's medicated ghee also available to do this so once you do this uh, you don't have to put anything into your ear to remove you just have to shake your ears from the behind and forward and the wax comes out of the ear so karna randra dauti is that that is how it is mentioned in giranda samhita then you have kapala randra dauti which is cleaning of the uh, face um, so for kapala randra dauti uh, it is very uh, uh different differently explained uh moving of your uh, right thumb on the forehead in this direction will cleans uh will cleanse the uh issues that are there in the sinus is what is mentioned in the uh giranda samhita so moving the right thumb only on the forehead right above the uh, eyebrows then we have Hridhauti cleaning the chest area. Some of us may find it difficult, you know, when we swallow a certain type of food, you feel it is just stuck right at the chest and you have to drink water to swallow it. So this is nothing but uh, all your impurities. For example, in your sink pipe or your wash basin pipe, uh, if there is a blockage, the, food, the water does not go in easily. The same way it happens to us also. When there is a when there is phlegm or when there is mucus uh, all over the pipe inside your uh, uh, you know esophagus, then what happens? The food doesn't go in easily. Certain types of food gets caught here. So specifically, that is why it is mentioned as hridhauti or this chest area, the uh, elementary canal here. You have to clean it. So that is done in many techniques. So one of the technique is vastradauti. So Vastra Dauti, you take a gauze material, it has to definitely be sterilized before you use it. So it has to be four uh, finger, your four finger uh, width, the width of the fabric should be that much. And it has to be dipped in water and then it has to be swallowed. You swallow it and drink warm water for it to go inside and just keep putting it into the mouth. Swallow the fabric till it reaches uh, the abdomen near the navel till it reaches the navel and leave a lot of fabric in front of you because you may tend to swallow the rest of the fabric so you must hold it tight and then do uh, massage the abdominal muscles like move your abdomen in and out side and side and turn to the right and left so it cleans the uh, food pipe so all the phlegm that is there in the food pipe is uh, is wiped out by the gauze material the four inch gauze material that you swallowed and then you can bring it up so you will see even if you do it's not recommended to do every time at least uh, once in a month is recommended so even if you do once in a month you will notice that there's there's so much phlegm that comes out uh, when we do this vastra uh, dauti and coming to danda dauti no one does these days uh, very popularly only vastra dauti is done but Danda Dauti, there are people who do. So here, traditionally, according to Giranda Samhita, a soft stem of turmeric should be taken. It should be clean and it should be put into the uh, mouth till the chest region. And then it should be turned around and it should be taken out. But this, uh, this is, uh, I haven't seen anyone practicing this so far. It is mainly Vastra Dauti or Vaman Dauti. So Vaman Dauti is drinking uh, lukewarm saline water. So it could be, it, the capacity of each person is different. So for me, it is four glasses, four small glasses of saline water is more than enough. One round of Kapalabhati will bring everything out. 
so your entire inner walls of the stomach will be cleansed completely so the inner walls of the stomach including the mucus layer including the uh, digestive juices that are there all of them will just come out of the uh, system so your entire inner walls so if there's any uh, stale food that is sitting or anything like that it is completely cleansed so this is also this also should be done in empty stomach so vaman dauti lukewarm saline water it could be different for different people because each one's abdomen like i said my abdomen is only this size so for me four glasses of water is more than enough for others it could be eight glasses it could be 10 glasses it's different for different people so you will know when the stomach is full with saline water automatically the body throws it out so that is uh, vaman dauti so it cleans your internal walls of the stomach so when you do this what happens is um your inner walls of the stomach are clean uh, there are absolutely no impurities because even the in, uh, mucus layer completely comes out so when the mucus layer comes out one important thing to note here is you must not eat anything for the next half an hour so for the next half an hour you must make sure that uh, Uh, you should not eat not even water because in your inner walls of the mouth if there's any wound it takes quite some time for it to heal uh, i mean if even if you drink water it burns no so that's the reason in the inner walls are so fresh so open to the food or water that is falling in so it's very important to make sure that these walls are covered with mucus layer they are covered with the digestive juices and only then you put food into the stomach for digestion so for it takes a minimum of half an hour so it's uh, it's advisable not to have anything for about half an hour after vaman dauti then you have uh, mola um, shodhana dauti which is cleaning of the anus this is also recommended either to do it with uh, turmeric stock or with a finger then we have basti the internal uh, this basti is nothing but enema so enema should be done um, uh either all of us know what enema is so enema is uh, you know inserting saline water through the anus and removing the uh, impurities from the intestines so there's jalabasti and there's talabasti jalabasti in, involves water and talabasti is done using uh, ashwini mudra ashwini mudra is nothing but uh, contracting and releasing the muscles of anus then we have neti we have sutra neti and jal neti jal neti is where you pour the water through the right nostril and take it out of the left nostril you can see the nasal cavity completely cleans up so uh, regular practice of jal neti you will notice that all the bacteria fungi or dust or whatever is there within the nostrils they easily come out um with the uh, jal neti then you have uh, um Uh, dukta where you know you use milk dukta and uh, grita or ghee is used only for therapeutic purposes not on a regular basis it is done only on uh, by uh, a recommendation from a doctor then you have sutra neti where you have the catheter which is put into the nostrils and then you bring it into the throat and bring it out of the mouth and then you clean the passage between the nose and mouth so that is sutra neti then you have uh, nauli which is abdominal uh, massage which is moving the abdominal muscles right to left left to right up and down and all that that is nauli and just moving a little fast because we are running short of time then we have trataka constant gazing of uh, light uh, in front of us at eye level this is a long procedure uh, so that has to be done in uh, that Uh, before we begin trataka we have to do a little bit of eye exercise and then begin trataka to for it to be a little more effective then we have kapalabhati which is a uh, uh, forceful exhalation and passive inhalation in general terms in kapalabhati we have different types vata karma vyut karma and shift karma so this is uh, you you suck air through the uh, so you suck air you suck water through the nose bring it out of the other nostril bring it out of the mouth you suck air through the mouth uh, suck air, water through the mouth bring it bring it out of the nose all this is uh, part of this 
so i'm just moving a little, little fast now so benefits of shat kriyas you can see it purifies the internal body for sure and your extra, uh, and your entire body starts functioning well when once you start purifying purifying the internal body so all your skin diseases and all that will slowly start coming down when you're consistently cleaning your internal body so this is given a lot of importance in giranda samhita then a series of uh, kriyas will help in tridosha so we have uh, vata pitta and kapha so it helps in balancing these doshas within our body then we have uh, shat karma which helps in uh, channelizing the flow of prana like i told you it will uh, because it is so forceful the vomiting is so forceful the enema that we get the basti that we do is so forceful so whatever nadis that are blocked it just opens up it opens up so this is uh, it helps an easy flow of prana also then we have the kriyas which are uh, which helps in connecting the mind body and soul because if you don't focus and put the uh, katheter or the water in the right direction it can be fatal it can many things can go wrong so focus will be there so you are completely connected within your body so it helps in connecting your body mind and soul then it helps and definitely helps in improving your immune system then it helps in it retards your age like uh, aging will not be seen on your face on your body so easily because your internal system is so pure and clean so it increases the awareness uh, at different levels therefore in turn like giranda samhita says it it makes it easy for your spiritual journey then the last topic that i wanted to cover today is uh, the yoga vasishta's topic on uh, vyadi or ailments or diseases that we get why we get how we get uh, what happens and all that so here you can see vyadi are of two types adi adi vyadi and anadi vyadi so adi vyadi is that that originates from the conflict of mind and anadi anadi vyadi is uh, non stress related so anadi vyadi is got either by infection like we have now the viral infection or the bacterial infection that comes from an external source which affects the body but that also can be cured if your immune system is strong so uh, anadi ja anadi vyadi can be cured may not be cured because if a snake bite can be fatal if it is not treated at the right time that is also an external factor so toxic substances that re, uh, that enter a poison that enters the body for example the it could be the venom only so that an accident is also part of uh, anadi vyadi so th these are things that are not in our control uh, infections are something that can be cured if our immune system is strong our immune system is strong if our mind is balanced and it's calm uh immune system will be strong uh, if there's a constant fear anger any kind of negative emotion uh agony or any kind of such negative emotion your immune system slowly comes down so balancing of the mind is very important to get rid of external factors that affect our health so uh this lesson was given to lord ram by yoga uh by sage vasishta and when ram was uh, in delusion which is not mentioned even in ramayan Uh, it is mentioned only in yoga vasishta so this uh, one of all the entire yoga vasishta was given to him during that uh, time and uh, this particular uh, chapter was given to ram when he mentioned that there is so much ailment that people suffering and how can i be happy in the palace that is when uh, vasishta started explaining this and he said adi vyadi adi vyadi is of two types one is sara and samanya sara is essential that is you either get it by birth or genetic you get it uh, through genetic as a ge uh, genetic disorder so for that self realization only can help only by understanding that this has happened because of whatever reason and uh, understanding that it has happened for this particular reason and doing taking precautions is all you can do samanya are the disorders that we create for ourselves it could be heart problem it could be uh, it could be high bp it could be diabetes it could be psychosomatic disorders these are something that we create by ourselves by not keeping our thoughts clean by not balancing our mind by not balancing our prana and the pranamaya kosha by not balancing the energies in our body and by not keeping the body clean or uh, body fit enough to live in so these are the reasons that could lead to samanya diseases 
that is uh, the ones that I mentioned. So uh, most of the things that I took for uh, picked up different topics for today's talk were from these texts. Patanjali Yoga Sutras, Bhagavad Gita, Hatha Yoga, Pradipika, Giranda, Samhita, Shiva Samhita, Vedas and Upanishads and Hatha Ratnavali. Hatha Ratnavali, Giranda Samhita, Hatha Yoga, Pradipika, uh, all three of them more or less have the same content. Patanjali Yoga Sutras is slightly different. Bhagavad Gita, all of you must uh, must be knowing. Shiva Samhita has, is, is very interesting. It tells us how this universe came into existence and what is Shiva and what is Shakti, what are these two energies and a lot more. It's very interesting. And Vedas and Upanishads, uh, there are so many Upanishads which talk about prana and which talk about koshas and all that. Very, very interesting. And the sound of Omkara, how it is linked with uh, different pranas and different koshas and everything. It's very interesting. Uh, I can go on and on. I think I'll just stop here for now. Um, I I Thank you, Swati ji. Thank you so much for wonderfully detailed uh, explanation on yoga and uh, that too a comparative study that you presented to us in such a short time of Patanjali Raj Yoga and the Hat Yoga and uh, also sharing about the yoga asanas and the breathing exercise how they can help in daily life uh, regarding our diseases and well-being and explaining in depth and the precautions and care that is to be taken while doing these different uh, physical and breathing exercises and some of the exercises at, at, or kriyas things to be done under the guidance of um, uh, guru who knows all these uh, things in depth and also you gave a, a perfect example of the proper diet especially the amount as you said should be this much and I think we all are guilty of maybe eating too much sometimes and the exercises and very important aspect that you emphasized about the yam and niyama that is the do's and don'ts before proceeding with the exercises and also about the lung capacity, especially during these challenging times of COVID pandemic. Uh, so thanks a lot. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation with so many references of authentic text scriptures. And now we will invite uh, some questions from our audience. I am sure by listening to Sister Swati's deeply researched uh, talk, uh, many of us may be having some questions. So if you can uh, raise your hand or we can invite you for the question or you can uh, type your questions in the chat box or if you make a comment or addition, you are most welcome. I would just like to apologize because of the background noise. It was from the neighbors and we can't help it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that is okay, Sister Swati. We all understand that it is the limitation of the household. And I think it's the same situation uh, everywhere. Sometimes we get uh, favorable conditions, sometimes we didn't, but still you continued and we could hear whatever you had to say. And Sister Somya Ji wants to say something. Sister Somya, could you start your video, please? She has raised a hand. Yes, Sister Swamiya, please. Hi, Swati. I have a uh, question. Like, see, uh, basically, uh, you said like uh, on the emotions and that part, right? So, when we, I mean, listen to such talks and the stuff, we get motivated. And I mean, for some time, we be conscious, like, okay, we have to be very uh, not aggressive or something like that. What is the con uh, consistent way of uh, maintaining these emotions or controlling uh, uh, these emotions? What do you suggest, like, which technique may help us? It's the same for everyone, including me. Uh, the technique that I follow is to just be aware at that moment. If you're aware, automatically you will do what you have to do. Being aware is what is important because when we are ang angry, we just focus on what we want to say, what we want to do. 
instead if we are just aware that we are getting angry just that simple fact will calm us down very quickly thank you thank you sister swamnia uh, for your question uh, brother vijay kumar has raised his hand could we have brother vijay kumar so if you can switch on your video लॉन्ग प्रोसेस and may be difficult to understand the proper way so you have don't no doubt it is you have done very well he, the speech might have cut into two pieces and given into like lecture classes this is my suggestion madam for you so thank you sir and also your suggestion well taken uh, by the organizers brother vijay kumar and we will try to have it in two parts uh, thank you and yes that's a very valid thing so we can reserve sister swati for another lecture in the future and uh, one question sister swati has come up so we it has been asked that how to know if someone is of what nature or dosha vat pitt or kapha the three kinds of doshas how to determine that there is a questionnaire for that uh, it's a very detailed questionnaire so if you fill up the whole questionnaire at the end of the questionnaire it will add, ask you to add a few points so each question has a point so if you add up those points in the end it will show you the percentage of each dosha that you have okay for so the questionnaire will be later on okay thank you thank you sir very nice of you right thank you sir for the your question okay uh, sister sahana ji if you can unmute yourself to ask your question yes please Namaste everybody. I hope everybody are doing good. Namaste Swati ji. Yes, Swati ji. I, my only question is, how do we try to at least slightly imbibe these techniques in children? Because nowadays, I think it's good to start imbibing these things, uh, you know, from their age of at least ten or something like that. So, how do we actually improve concentration skills for children? And how? Um, what kind of techniques do you suggest for you know students? simple thing is uh, um we can't suggest uh, the pranayam and all these things because children will not sit in one place so you can give them balancing asanas which will help in improving focus because balancing asanas needs a lot of focus so helping them to do balancing asanas or giving them activities which will help them to balance it could be just making them sit and keep keeping books on top of their head and asking them to balance simple playful activities like that will help them you know sit straight and keep the head straight for a long time that is sitting in correct posture okay all those small activities playful activities uh, to encourage them yeah so you mean to tell that we need the concentration take yeah and for children uh, we don't teach yoga like we teach for adults it's more in the form of a story and in the form of games Uh, we make them do asanas through games and play thank you thank you so much thank you sister suhana and sister swati just as you mentioned about the question ayer to know one's nature so we have request from our members brother zinu master firoza master from mumbai and sister vinita from varanasi that can we have that question ayer shared with them so i will share it with you it's in okay. my email so i have to just okay if oh later no okay you can send it to me later and okay. we will we can share uh, or if you because otherwise it might distract you from the thing uh, you can send me i can share with sister vinita and uh, uh, brother zinu master ji so that's taken care of any more okay brother taral munshi ji has raised his hand uh, brother taral yes. Uh, I have a very uh, different question. Maybe it was taken in parts by you, but you mentioned that there are traditional yogic texts. I mean, the different yogas like Patanjali, Bhagavad Gita, 
hat yoga and uh, so on so all this uh, i have been in a different period and were they were specific for some use or we have to uh, do all the yogas together not necessary whatever applies to you whatever you feel you can connect to it so what i mean is that was uh, bhagavad gita or patanjali gita or hatha yoga were meant for something specific to be gained the ultimate goal of everything is the same thing okay okay thank you thank you brother taral ha uh, dr rajam uh, pillai ji uh, yeah dr rajam ji please yeah uh swati a minimum package how much time it will take because as it is i'm busy for 14 hours academic work taking classes and nowadays even participating my waking hour is from 4:30 to 10:30 how much time a minimum yoga package will take so uh for this if you don't have time there are uh no i have whatever time i have how do i utilize it so uh within the given time there are uh compact kriyas that uh, gurus have uh, created especially for people who have a lot of activities throughout the day for example sudarshan kriya or shambhavi or inner engineering program that uh, some guru and shri shri varshan for or many other teachers have brought up so they are as effective as any other form of uh, yoga or just simply doing even bhakti bhakti yoga for example devotional uh, singing of bhajans in the puja room for some time complete surrender that is also nothing but bhakti yoga so in which ever way i wanted to mention about that but uh, since yesterday sister linda already mentioned about bhakti yoga karma yoga and all that even selfless service is part of yoga mother teresa uh, is a yogi uh even though she never did any asanas she is a karma yogi because she consistently uh, was serving throughout her life so I'm sorry sorry why i'm saying it because one of my friend very senior person uh she is patanjali follower and all even buying wheat and tail bhi wo patanjali ko khareedti kya ho raha hai pranayam kar dala yoga kar dala chai bana dali nashta aisa hota hai kya yoga एक के बाद एक के बाद एक नो इफ यू सी इन पतंजलि योग सूत्र आसनास आर नॉट मेंशनड एट ऑल नॉट दिस पतंजलि द फेमस वन ओके 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 अह इट्स नॉट अ मस्ट सो इसो इन पतंजलि योग सूत्र इज शी डेली डज इट फॉर 30 इयर्स इट्स गुड इफ शी इज बीइंग एबल टू डू इट बट इट्स नॉट अ मस्ट टू हैव अ हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल दैट यू हैव टू डू इट देयर इज नथिंग लाइक इट्स गुड इफ यू कैन डू आदमी क्या करेगा मेरे घर के लोग तो पूछते हैं ऐसे भी तेरा क्या होगा करके लेकिन शी इज अ डीजीएम इन अ बैंक एंड शी फॉलोज ऑल दिस ऑल दिस ऑल दिस मेकिंग हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल्स व्हाट हैपेंस यू यू गेट स्ट्रेस समटाइम्स सो स्ट्रेस इज नॉट गुड सो समटाइम्स फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इज आल्सो एडवाइजेबल नहीं ये रूटीन अच्छा है क्या आई एम आस्किंग दैट mechanical routine acha hai is it good that is what i was trying to say as long as it's not stressing you and if you miss one day you shouldn't feel like i did something wrong as long as it's like that as long as your mind is flexible and not getting stressed about not doing something one day it's fine because that's mentioned in patanjali yoga sutra not to be very uh, hard you know hard on your practices She's hard on us, Mama. So, very, so very, परेशान कर डालती, प्रणायम कर डाला, ये कर डाला. Doctor Rajam, you are already awake from four thirty to ten thirty. You are working and still happy, fit, and healthy, and uh, so there is no need to. ये बढ़िया, सबसे बढ़िया उपाय कुछ मत करो, मजा मारो. नहीं आप आप जाग और कर्म योगा कर रहे हैं. Yes, you are already doing कर्म योगा, यार. बॉम्बे की भाषा में मजा मारो और गुजरातियों की भाषा में बहुत मजा मारो थैंक्स स्वाति इट वाज वंडरफुल व्हाट यू डिड वाज वेरी गुड थैंक यू डॉक्टर राजम थैंक यू सॉरी भाई भाई सॉरी 
And I ask your age. Who's? Swati. Swati ka age. Is it? I'm 35. Huh? 45. 35. And we have in the comment section, we have Brother Charlie Romero, who is the president of Philippines Theosophical Society. Thank you for the interesting presentation, Swati ji. Many people have written many comments about your splendid talk. We cannot read all of them. Brother Gopi Krishna has written best wishes. Swati Reddy Garu, many thanks for your detailed speech. Kindly post the recording in Pragya CS studio. So, yes, we will do that, Brother Gopi Krishna. And any more questions? Any comments from our uh, Brother Sundaram Ramanji or Brother N.C. Ramanuja Chariji. Okay, Brother Sundaram Raman wants to say something. Yes, yes. Unmute, sir, please. Unmute. No, no. What I was uh, trying to convey is that uh, some theoretical knowledge is uh, needed for yoga and may be found in books. But particularly when we take up this uh, yoga practices, it should be under the guidance of some trained person. Because uh, after hearing the speech, if somebody is uh, going to take up things like dauti, basti, and things like that, it may not produce the right type of effect. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Swati, do you want to say something? Yes, he was very much right. This should be on kriyas must be done only under the guidance of our experts. So because uh, what happens is after uh, one here comes to hear the speech, you know now with uh, corona around, they feel that they have some problem in the throat. They may be immediately try to do that, and when they are not doing it under uh, proper guidance, it will more often produce. Uh, yes, unwanted. And uh, that I think that may be one of the reasons why um, HPB in her writings has not uh, encouraged uh, uh, the hot yoga practices because for that, uh, as Swati ji mentioned in the, in the beginning in her talk, that this should only be done under proper guidance instructor of a guru, uh, like we come we read that Dr. Annie Besant or C. W. Ledbetter. And even HPB, when she went to Tibet, uh, she did some uh, uh, these some of the things to have her uh, their psychic, uh, higher powers develop, but of course under the instructions of a guru. Thank you, Brother Sundaram Ramanji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Shindeji. You are uh, sorry, sorry, Swati ji. Uh, that's the reason I was stressing on yamas and yamas without following the basic things. If yeah. you go into activating chakras and kundalini yoga and all that, it could lead to psychic disorders. Disorders. So that's, that's very that's very important point for our uh, all the delegates. Uh, what Swati is saying that uh, yam and niyama, the do's and don'ts, are the foundation of the uh, yoga. But many people just think that by doing asana and yoga uh, exercises, we will get cured of diseases, and still don't follow yama and niyama that may bring a negative results. So please follow this properly. And Dr. Kamal Mohanoth wants to say something from Rajasthan. Ah, Kamal ji. Ah, Kamal ji, unmute kar lije. You were unmuted. Ah, unmute theme. Ah, yes, yes. Now, please speak. Uh, I am really amused how she was able to do uh, to cover all the whole system, the whole syllabus actually of the yoga in such a one hour thing and so beautifully, so nicely and uh, all Ayurveda and the um, Naturopathy and all the systems of yoga and every detail of that. You can see when forgotten to say about the chakras then she added two also. So it was wonderful actually. It's just like a say matlab, uh, uh, it is an ocean actually which was said in the one hour. And so beautifully she explained. Absolutely. No, it can be divided into many many lectures actually. 
and she covered all the types completely. So I just congratulate her for the wonderful speech, beautifully explained. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kamal Manoth, for joining. Uh, we are running short of time. Uh, 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 Professor Shinde, you want to make some uh, final comments? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very nice strategy. Wonderful uh, talk you have given. Very good presentation. Shikarji, I want. I was uh, joined a little late. I want to know about the Swatiji. She is the member of the Theosophical Society, which yes. is large, etc. She is Swatiji. Yeah. Saraswatiji is daughter. She's right here. Namaste. Oh, Namaste, Auntie. Namaste, 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 Namaste. Namaste. Yes, yes, Bangalore. Oh, I got it now. So the inspiration is there behind. Our generation. generation. Wonderful, wonderful presentation. And uh, as you are doing some research, do you have any uh, idea of origin of this Patanjali Yoga Sutra? Origin, actually, it was not uh, given in a written form. It was verbally given to the, their disciples and later uh, later on it was put into writing. Just like yeah. uh, our Vedas and all that. My hearty good wishes and congratulations to you Thanks. for presentation. Thank you, Professor Shinde. Uh, we have uh, Sister Rekha Nahar from Philippines among us. Uh, Sister Rekha, would you like to add something? Yes, yes. Uh, I first thing I wanted to tell uh, Shatiji, you presented it very well. And uh, what I'm looking at all the time you are talking is your very peaceful disposition. I wonder if it is the result of your yoga practice. Could be. <laughs> okay. Next is um, uh, including myself. Many people know that we should do certain yoga or meditation in that sense, but we, we get lazy. So do you have any suggestion? We have many good reasons not to do yoga, even for five minutes. Do you have any suggestion for that? Thank you. So like I mentioned, the definition of asana, Siram Sukham Asana, if you can just sit in one position comfortably without moving, still close eyes, that you're already doing an asana. So there's no one who has not done an asana. There's no one who has not done yoga in a day. Uh, and if she... you also just breathe in deeply, do a yogic breathing, expand the lower lobes, middle lobes, upper lobes of the lungs, inhale deeply, exhale completely, you are already doing yogic breathing. So many different, there's karma yoga, which you uh, can do just doing, you don't have to go outside the house to serve someone. All mothers are karma yogis because they just serve their children without uh -huh. expecting anything. They're already doing karma yoga. Uh, but also, but yeah, but yeah. essence of a thing is how to overcome the laziness that sometimes overcome. Uh, yeah, sometimes you might feel drowsy and a little lazy. Uh, Kapalabhati, Pastrika, and all these simple uh, breathing techniques will energize your body. So Kapalabhati is uh, forceful uh, flapping of your abdomen. So that will increase the energy level, even Bhastrika, loose fist in front of the shoulders, forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation. Will in, you will notice if you close your eyes and observe all the laziness and the drowsiness and everything would have gone. You feel more energized and active within yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rekha. Thank you, Sister Swati. And now, all final comment. If uh, Dr. Ramanujachari, would you like to say something? Otherwise, we will proceed for closing. Please, uh, let's close it. Okay, 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 sir. I have nothing to add. Okay, sir. But thank you. Uh, so, again, uh, uh, we have now come to the end of this session, but as we said earlier, definitely not to the end of journey that we all are undertaking consciously or unconsciously and hope that today's session might have cleared many doubts. And still, if you have any doubts or inquiries, uh, the email of Sister Swati is given in the chat box. Uh, you can always contact her for further uh, uh, guidance or further instructions. And so... 
on behalf of uh, madras theosophical federation and all its members and pragya cs studio we extend our heartfelt gratitude uh, and on behalf of all the our delegates uh, heartfelt gratitude to sister swati reddy who very happily uh, accepted our proposal to deliver a talk uh, on the subject of uh, yoga holistic approach to daily life and taken time from her busy schedule to share her thoughts on this eve of international day of yoga and we are sure that after your wonderful detailed guidance and instructions many of us would like to undertake further study on this subject and many more inquiries will be coming to you and a very big thanks to all the participants from all over india and around the world who made this session very vital and engaging with their questions and inputs and also uh, we would like to thank our uh, technical team part brother taral munshi who is always ready to help in technical aspects and if you want to watch this video again this talk again or other talks on philosophical subjects you can kindly visit to the youtube channel pragya cs studio now a couple of announcements uh, just as we mentioned in the beginning of the talk that uh, there is uh, inauguration of swayam vikas center of self development uh, started by sister swati and followed by yog nidra at 6:30 the link of that is given in the chat box you can copy it and register yourself if you want to attend another program for tomorrow is organized by kerala theosophical society uh, uh, which is a talk on the flower of yoga by dr m a ravindran which will be at 7 pm and the link of that also is shared in the chat box so those who wish to attend these programs kindly you can note it down and also regarding the next meeting of uh, pragya cs studio we invite you all to join us on a very interesting subject gandhi's theosophical approach and developmental stress which will be presented by dr ajay rai and this talk will be the last in the series of the celebration of festival of yoga in daily life and now for closing this memorable evening i invite you all to close your eyes and make a will prayer with all our will power and concern for the welfare of all beings especially during the present global situation i would say it in sanskrit and english both om सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कचिदुखभागे ओ शाति 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 मे ऑल बिकम हैपी may none fall ill may all see auspiciousness everywhere may none ever feel sorrow om shanti 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 thank you once again everyone and now we will keep the meeting open for uh 